Hey there and welcome to Edges of Earth. My name is Brock. I spent about a year and two months in Vietnam. I both taught English and did a bit of solo traveling in southern Vietnam. Today I want to share with you some of the pros and cons of living in Vietnam. Now if you're Vietnamese and you're watching this video, don't get upset. These are just things that I notice that are a little bit different than what we're used to in, in, for example, I'm from America. It doesn't mean that I hate Vietnam, not at all. I would love to come back, but these are just some of the things that were a bit difficult for me. So if you're from the West and you love experiencing different cultures like I did, you're going to love Vietnam, especially when you get out of the tourist areas. In the tourist areas, it's pretty wild, pretty crazy compared to what we are used to. But when you step out of that area, it's like a different world. And I loved it. Here are my basic pros and cons of living in Vietnam. I'm going to start with the cons. Number one, the language barrier. Now, as I travel, there's very, very few people who speak English. And if they do, it's like a simple hello or hi or what is your name or where are you from? And then after that, it kind of, it dies. Most of the younger generation know those phrases from school, but above and beyond that, not very much. Now there were people that did stop me, even in the countryside, and wanted to talk. As a general rule of thumb, in the country, few people speak English. This of course made it more interesting to me because I was able to use my phone and get close and talk and have a conversation with my phone. So communication was still a bit slower. If you're not into technology and you don't know how to use a smartphone to translate things, then yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get around. While I was living there, I try to be as healthy as possible. One thing that I always purchase a lot of in America are herbs, different herbs at the store in the form of capsules. Now, there's so many pharmacies everywhere and they have many different medications that you can buy without a prescription as well as different herbs that you can buy. I'm an herb guy, I stay away from the medications. But there's different herbs and supplements and vitamins that I wanted to have while I was there. And I will say it's particularly difficult, not because of the language barrier, but because they just don't have them on their shelves. It's not a thing. Some were simple and basic, like amino acid. And I remember translating amino acid, acid amine, right? In Vietnamese. They knew what I was talking about, but they raised their eyebrow and they translated, why do you want amino acids? And I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding? The core of my existence and your existence from every hair to every cell to everything within every cell of your body is there because of an amino acid. So why do I want them? Well, I want to give my body what it wants in order to repair and reproduce proper cells. But maybe this is not their way of thought in their medicine, so therefore it's not a thing. So things like that, and I could go, I could give you this huge list of things that they just didn't have. From my perspective, the medical system is crazy. So I read online a while ago, for every 100,000 people in Vietnam, there's an incredibly small amount of doctors. Like, Google this stuff. Blows your mind. And I believe it because as you drive past the hospital, you see lines going into the hospital all the way out. People are waiting in this line that seems to never end, starting at 4 or 5 a.m. They're waiting for the hospital to open so they can see a doctor. My recommendation to you is don't get hurt. <laughs> Otherwise, you pay out of your pocket and you have to pay a lot of extra money to get to the front of the line. Apparently, you can cut, you can cheat. If you have more money, you can skip everybody else who has less money. Kind of weird. Luckily, I never had any problems that I needed to visit the doctor for. Yay me. But if you're unlucky and some problem does happen, be prepared. It, it can be a, a difficult thing. And also, some of the logic behind some of the treatment, from my perspective, is wild. Like, there's some things I just can't wrap my mind around. I've heard stories online and firsthand from the local people in certain scenarios about being treated for certain problems. And I just can't believe some of these treatments were used for these type of problems. So again, you can do your own research on that type of thing. Just to me, it was wild. When you go to a hotel, they take your passport. End of story. It is law. So don't be offended that this hotel has taken your passport. It just is. And if you go out and are stopped by the police and they say, where's your passport? And you don't have it, that could be a problem. Some countries, they shun upon not carrying your passport and they can make it a big problem for you. While in Vietnam, I traveled everywhere. I never once carried my passport with me, both while they were staying in the hands of people in hotels or living in an apartment. And I would just leave it in my bag in the apartment never had any problems. You'd see police, they'd smile. Sometimes they wouldn't even acknowledge your existence. But when they did, it was usually a, a casual smile or a, a head nod. It was never an aggressive. I, in the tourist areas, again, I've heard stories out of the tourist areas. They were very kind, very helpful, very polite. And I was never once asked for my passport. Roads are dangerous. Like when I say dangerous, I mean dangerous. Basically all rules and all laws that exist on the road, nobody follows them. Just burn that into your head forever. <laughs> 
Just assume that they are going to break that law. Assume that the stop sign is there and someone is going to go through it. Assume that they're not going to use their blinker. Assume, assume, assume the bad thing will happen. Chances are they're not going to follow the rules. And in some cases, the rules that we are used to don't even exist in Vietnam. All I can say is the general concept of crossing a road is just go and don't stop. As you start to inch your way across the road, you look in the direction that the cars are coming, only look at that direction, don't care about the other direction. You just focus on that direction and time it so you go, you're walking in between motorbikes and they zip past you, zip around you. They will see you and they will not hit you. But if you stop or you hesitate, they now miscalculate what you're doing and they will think, oh, I gotta go around them this way. Or maybe they'll think, I gotta go around them that way. And that causes confusion until the last second and then you get ran over. So once you start walking, just keep walking and you should be good to go. You get to the middle of the road, you then look over here and time it for the other side and you keep going. And if you need to hang out in the middle of the road as you wait for the next way wave of cars, awesome, stand in the middle of the road. Cars are flying past you, doesn't matter. This is normal. So it's a different way of life, it's a different system that they use. Just be aware, it's different. Lack of safety laws, this is pretty much everywhere. I can give you just a couple examples. When you're driving through construction, there could be huge, huge pieces of equipment carrying big bricks and loads of dirt over your head as you are going under it, and there's no rules against it. It's just, as I carry these this one ton of blocks and bricks I have to twist this way and then cars are and cars and trucks are going under my bucket full of stuff and if they hit a bumper if it shakes and it falls and hits you in the head or kills someone I don't know maybe there's punishment behind it but the reality is is there's no safety involved and obviously in our countries there's cones you have to be like so many feet away from this activity and there it's just you're in it you're part of it you're you go through it and around it you must wear a helmet while you're driving a motorbike or riding a motorbike. Why? Because you're an adult. But you can happily put your children in front of you and behind you on the motorbike and they are not required to wear a helmet whatsoever. You can drive with two adults on a motorbike, but you can stack as many children on that thing as you can put on and none of them need to wear helmets. So it's an interesting concept. We in our countries usually protect the children first and make sure they are the most safe. And this country, it was a little bit different. So imagine that type of logic everywhere and so everything is very different than than what we are used to dirty facilities this is the biggest con for me the concept of cleanliness in vietnam is different from the concept of cleanliness in our country specifically you must take your shoes off when you enter but very rarely do people wear socks it's always bare feet so imagine coming in to tile floor with everyone's bare feet everywhere. Sounds relatively okay until you realize how dirty some people's feet get. People sweat and the mud puddles are sometimes left over. People go to the, the bathroom, which is called a wet bathroom, which the toilet is next to the shower and everything inside gets wet. So if someone takes a shower wherever you are or uses that, water ends up all over the floor. You walk in with dusty feet all over, mud is left everywhere inside, and then you exit the wet bathroom and mud trails are left everywhere. Even though there's a towel on the floor to usually wipe your feet when you exit, doesn't always work, mud happens everywhere always. And then your bare feet then walk over everybody else's mud and it's just this thing that happens. And the bacteria and the whole. Oh. So from my perspective, terrible, right? and literally disgusting. I almost always wore socks just to avoid that. It was just a, it's just a different thing than what we're used to, that's all. And another con is you're surrounded by a lot of poverty. It's like everywhere. However, surprisingly enough, there was not a lot of begging that happened. Now I've been to some other Asian countries and begging was just like unreal. It doesn't stop no matter where you go. But my experience in Vietnam was that it was extremely low compared to some of these other countries. It does exist, it does happen, be aware. You see the poverty around you more than people kind of bother you with their problems type of thing. Oftentimes when I was in the rural areas where there was no tourists, the beggars would go to all of the local people but would avoid me. Maybe it was a courtesy thing, maybe it was a language barrier. I'm not sure the reason behind it, but many times I was avoided during the begging process. So these are my list of cons. Again, doesn't mean I hate Vietnam, not at all. It's just these are the things that were very different, kind of in a negative way compared to what I am used to. Now also there's things that are positive in a different way that I want to share about now. My favorite part about Vietnam was the people. Now, I'm a people person. The reason why I travel in the first place is to experience culture, which stems from people. They were so friendly. Now, when I landed in Hanoi for the first time, I must say this. I almost left after a week. I almost got on a plane and went to a different country because 
Many things that the Vietnamese people do are very different from the way that we do them in terms of friendliness and politeness. And it took me a while to realize that they are really friendly people. The way they show friendliness, kindness, and affection is different than we do. And in the first week, I was misinterpreting their kindness. Now, some things that they do was very similar to us, and you could immediately see that they were kind. But other things, we would almost think that it's a little bit offensive. And so my interpretation of some situations were like, why are they so rude? I don't understand. What I realized is that they're actually trying to show friendliness. It's just different than what we would normally do. If you feel that way in the beginning, remember two things. One, get out of the tourist area because most likely they are being a little bit unkind because all they want is your money. Tourist areas suck, in my opinion. Number two, after you've got out of the tourist area, people still might appear to be a little bit rude. Most likely they're not. Your interpretation of them is incorrect. Give it extra time because their culture is a little bit different than what we're used to. And I can tell you that once I learned how they're different, I realized that they're so friendly and they all tried to show kindness and politeness to me. Sometimes you're going to have people come up to you and want a selfie with you. They're going to say, hey, you, that's all they know. But they come up to you and they point to their phone. Ah, picture, picture, selfie, selfie. They all know the word selfie. And you say, yeah, yeah. And then they swarm you and take like 25 photos. And they always say one more, one more. And it turns out to be like 100 more, but it's all fun. People will sometimes invite you for food and drinks. You're walking and people are sitting drinking beer or drinking coffee or smoking or eating food. And they're like, oh my God, you're a tourist. You're a foreigner. Come sit with us and, and come. Now they don't say this. It's all body language. They'll, they'll say, hey, come. By the way, this means come here, not go away. <laughs> So they want to invite you to have lunch with them. It's so kind, it's so polite. Sometimes people will invite you on a mini adventure. Now this is something that happened from both children and adults. They'll say, hey, you, why don't you come with me tomorrow and we can do this thing? And you're like, okay, why not? If you have time to do these things, awesome, more power to you. Obviously, you're, if you're on a time limit and you have to go back home very soon, pick and choose who you want to hang out with or what you want to do. But if you're a free bird like me, Awesome, more power to you, go have fun with anyone. And on many occasions, doesn't matter where I was, if people were swimming, they would invite you. And this is normally children. There were times where I went swimming with complete strangers and it was fun. Uh, it sometimes draws a crowd, especially if you're not in a tourist area and they don't see foreigners very often. People kind of come and just watch you swim. It's a little weird, but all is good. So that's pretty much it. I hope if you are doing some research on the internet about Vietnam, I hope this kind of helps a little bit. Now there's many more pros and there's a few more cons, of course, but these are, I guess, the biggest ones from my perspective. If you're on the fence about going to Vietnam, I totally encourage you to go. A, you're not gonna spend a lot of money and B, you're going to get one of the richest cultures ever because few people travel to Vietnam. It's not a popular destination around the world. And so you have the chance to go to a country where the culture is still so rich and not influenced like people like you and me, right? Tourists. I absolutely encourage you to go. I thank you for watching and remember, your time is running out. Start living. Take care.